What's up fellow game developers, my name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be continuing our 2D top down RPG adventure style um, game uh, in Unity. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be creating the enemies which are going to be able to track and chase our player and hunt him down. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some little characters and we're going to set them up with some radiuses and once you walk within the certain radius of that uh, enemy it will then chase you. So without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is actually uh, change the background colour of our environment just because I think it looks really terrible and you know I don't know why they chose this blue as a starting background. Come on guys, well, what's happening? So we're going to go with maybe a purpley colour. Let's let's. What do you think of that? I know it contrasts with our pink a little, but I think that works. We'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. I think that's good for now. We can always change that later. Um, and then let's also, with our walls, um, let's just quickly change their color as well. I just want to make sure it's looking a little bit fresher. Let's give us a really dark sort of purpley there. There you go. I like that. That's looking cool. And our player, I think, needs a stronger pink if we're going to go for that. So let's try maybe something like that or even... We can go really pink, but that hurts my eyes a little, so let's go. I think that works. We'll, we'll stick with that. Cool. There we go. So we've got our color set. Now, you obviously set your colors however you want. So anyway, let's go in our sprites folder. Right click, go to create, and let's find a new sprite, and let's choose the sprite for our enemy. So I think we're going to go with a triangle because we all know triangles are bad people. So we're going to enter a triangle in here, and here is our enemy. So let's just, oh, let's go back to the scene view. And let's just drop our enemy in here. Now, as you can see, he's just a nice little white boy. Um, I think we're going to keep him white. The reason being is because it's night and fifth, meaning you'll be able to see the enemies before they see you. And, you know, they won't be able to sneak up on you as hard. Maybe we'll make some stealth ninjas, which are like a light purple later on. Cool. So let's move these guys. Let's move this guy. Literally, let's just set him um, at zero minus four. Right. And we're going to give this guy a circle collider 2D. Now we're going to make this about 4 radius, no nope, let's go for a 3 for now, so you can see that's the radius of our player or of our enemy. Now once our player walks into this radius, um, it's going to cause a trigger to happen, as you can say it says it's triggered, we're going to turn this on. Now what that means is it won't. we won't collide with this, but we will set off an offence when we walk into this area. We're then going to add a second circle collider here, which is actually going to be let's say 0. 3, 5. No, we'll go 4, 5. That seems about right. There you go. So we've got a circle collider, which, oh, you know, 0.4 will do. Yeah, that's good. We have a circle collider now on our enemy as well. So if we touch this, this is what we're going to use to do damage to our player. But for now, we don't need circle collider. We only need the um, top one here. So there we go. So we've got this. Let's rename him to enemy. So the next step is actually setting up a script on our enemy, which we are going to call enemy or enemy targeting, or enemy movement, movement, enemy, we'll call it enemy script, we're going to add the enemy script to our enemy, and once we've done that, is it on there, there it is, uh, we're going to double click this and open it up in CS sharp, or <laughs> CS sharp, VS code, which I'm going to drop just here, there we go, close this, and let's zoom in a few ticks, shut this side and zoom in a bit more here we go so what we're going to do in here is firstly we're going to just break these all onto their own lines we don't need that um you know we don't need the comments so the first thing we want to do inside of our script after removing the start and update method is create a public float called speed now this is going to be equal to 3f we're then going to create a public tra or a private transform trans form if I can spell transform I'm going to create a we're going to create an on trigger enter 2d now in the on trigger enter 2d we're going to check if the the thing that enters the trigger so we're going to say if other dot game object dot tag is equal to player if it is we're going to say transform or oh, sorry this should be called target not transform if target we're going to set target equal to other dot transform now, once we've done that, we can hit save. Let's go back to our script here. Click, wait for it all to refresh. There you go. Um, and there you go. So now once we enter here, what's good? Debug dot log target. 
So now let's wait for it to load. And there you go. So let's hit play. And as you see, we don't see anything, but if we get close, you can see it pass through our player here. So that means it's correct. But now the target for this, if we just minimize this or turn off maximize, click on our enemy, you'll see that ours, or, and we turn on debug mode, debug, <laughs> go down. You can see our target is equal to the player transform. But once we've left the enemy's site, um, for some reason it's still there. Now to fix that, we need to go back into our script and we need to create enough, we need to use enough one of Unity's built-in methods and we'll call it on X trigger exit 2D. So when we leave it, we're gonna copy this. We're gonna check if it's the player. So we're gonna set the target equal to null. Now this means um, it won't be valued at anything. So let's just delete the debug logs here, remove them both, there we go. So now we've just left with this. But now obviously, if we go in here and we hit play, you'll see once we enter down the bottom left, you see we get, oh, we've removed the debug logs. Um, now, if we go to, let's minimize this and I'll show you the actual tab. So if we go to our enemy, uh, we turn on debug mode again. And as you can see at the bottom here, we have player, but if we move out, you can see it goes to none, which is perfect. So we get player, none, player, none, player, none. There you go, so that's all working great. So let's move back to our script. Now we actually have to get the enemy to chase the target. So we're gonna create an update method. And inside this update method, we're going to go in here and say, if target is not equal to null. So if it's not equal to null, we're gonna say transform dot position. So our, play, our um, enemy transform dot position, a factor two, dot move towards and we're going to move from our transform dot position to our target dot position and this is going to be divided by our step now we're going to create a step here so we're going to create a public float or just a float which is going to be called um, step and set this equal to our speed times our time dot delta time and this should move our player or our enemy towards our character when we're inside this area and when we're not we're not we're gonna not move so let's save and let's have a look if this is working so wait for this to refresh let's hit play now when we get closer you can see he's now chasing me and if i can escape his reach you see we got out of his boundaries he now no longer follows me but if we enter his zone again he'll start chasing me and we can leave his area again Okay guys, so that is it for this video. It was just a simple creating a uh, enemy and making him chase our player. Um, so in the next video, we're gonna look at maybe either adding health or something else. Let me know what you guys wanna see in the comments below and I will try and get it done in this series. There's gonna be a lot of things we're gonna try and cover, but there's also a few things I might not be able to cover. And if I do miss those topics, please let me know and I'll try and create a separate video on them or if not, integrate it into our series here. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And finally, if you have any questions, feedback, or you just want to have a chat, then drop a comment below. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video and peace out.